We've all heard the saying that everything's bigger in Texas. But today, we're headed to Live Oak Brewing Company in Austin, where we're going to dispute the idea that bigger is better. This small craft brewer's restrained focus on classics with balance, simplicity, and even lower alcohol content is a delicious deviation from the more commonly seen beer trends. Hi, I'm Suzanne Henriksen, a researcher and storyteller by trade and a world explorer drink local enthusiast by heart. I'm traveling the world to celebrate and share the people, the process, the stories, and the innovations behind craft alcohol. And I can't wait to share our amazing finds with all of you. So let's get drinking, crafty cask style. Beyond the approach to beer, what I love about Live Oak Brewing is the atmosphere. It feels like we're in the middle of the American countryside beneath sprawling live oak trees, yet we're sipping on delicious Eastern European style beer right outside the cultural mecca of Austin, Texas. A little bit city, a little bit country, and a whole lot of delicious Eastern European style beer. Let's head inside and see what we can learn about this unique brewery. Chip, hi. Hello, Suzanne. You're just in time. Oh, yeah. I just poured a beer. Look at this. Special for you. I love seeing the mastermind of Live Oak Brewing right behind the bar. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> I like to be behind the bar. So, what made you think about opening a brewery entirely focused on kind of Eastern European style, Central European style beers way back in the 90s in the heart of Texas. They're just intrinsically delicious beers. Did you feel like you had to educate consumers a little bit way back then uh, to these styles of beers? Were these styles of beers kind of popular in the 90s? Uh, there was a little bit of education, but, but they, as soon as they tasted them, they realized, oh, these are delicious beers. Yeah, baptism by I don't fire. have to think about it. <laughs> They're just good. Good, I love it. So you can't make a girl drink alone. I think you need to join me in this. Uh, my pleasure. <laughs> I thought you'd never ask. Uh, cheers. Cheers. Thanks for coming. Yeah, this is exciting. Let's Magic uh, that goes into take this. a look in the, the brew house. We can start there and go off into fermentation. Great. We're in the brew house. It's kind of the heart of, a, of any brewery. And if we talk about the pills, the malt mill is our easiest one. It's only one malt. Okay. We use an under-modified heirloom variety of barley oh, malt. To be more authentic. To, to be the... more authentic. So in the spirit of authenticity, though, it makes your process a little bit more complex versus you could to kind of take a shortcut and use more modern malt, right? Absolutely. But you choose not to do that. Absolutely. Our philosophy is that, well, we could take a shortcut on the mash, right. and it'd probably only change the flavor of the beer five or 10%. We could take a shortcut on our ingredients. They're certainly just as good of malts here in North America. Right. They're just different. Right. That's only gonna make a, you know, 10 or 15% difference and so on and so forth all the way through the the process and pretty soon it doesn't taste like you wanted it like to this taste. it doesn't taste like this delicious beer right so we're trying to to duplicate the process and the ingredients and, and make it as even if that's a little possible. harder right that's eh, a little harder yeah. it's not that bad and in fact especially since we have the new brew house the brewers they really like doing it that way if these small but important pieces that you're paying a lot of attention to that, you know, make your beers distinct and different from other people oh, kind yeah. of making these beers, oh, yeah. right? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I have to say, we've been sipping on this delicious pills, which I love, um, but I would like to try some of these other beers. I'm getting a little thirsty as we talk about all this process and all this. Yeah, and you're asking me all these questions. I can't drink fast enough. <laughs> I know. I'm not letting you drink. That's right. Yeah. So why don't we go let you drink for a second and we'll pour some more beers and we Cheers can try a few. That. Yeah, let's do it. I'm pretty excited about this. Yeah, so we lined up four of our beers. We've got the Grodziski, the Schwarzer Rauch, Hefeweizen, and our Czech Pilsner, the Pils. Great. So, so start I with... suggest you start here okay. with the Grodziski. It's nice and light, 100% smoked wheat malt beer. Smoked, all right. Wow, this is interesting. This is like, I feel like this could confuse some people when they take their first sip because when looking at this beer, it's light and bright and I'm not expecting that little bit of smokiness to it, but it's a really- But it's not overpowering. Mm -hmm. It's very complimentary. It's a very refreshing 
and light beer. Yeah, I actually love it because I, I really like smoked beers, but I like that this is a lighter smoked beer that yeah. I could have. It's only quite 3% a few percent of. alcohol. <laughs> yeah. It has uh, the full mouthfeel of a, of a regular beer, yeah, it's even really, though it's low alcohol. It's really great. All right, the next beer is also a smoked beer. All right. That's our Schwarzer Rauch. So it's a black lager. It has some smoke malt in it as well. This is really nice. The, the look of this is what I expect more from a smoked beer. I expect it to be a darker beer, typically. Um, but it's actually still really easy drinking and like it's a very just, light beer, despite that it's a smoked beer. Right, it's just a regular beer. I love beer. that. And that's what, it, that gets back to we're just trying to do beers that in some place or another have been the predominant beer style. All right, the next beer like is our biggest seller, the Hefeweizen. Mm -hmm. It's a Bavarian style wheat beer. Unlike this one, it's only, it's about 50% wheat malt. Okay. And it's cloudy. Yep. Um, it's unfiltered. A lot of that is from the yeast. A lot of it is from the wheat malt. And the, the defining feature of a Hefeweizen is that it have that clove and, and clove and banana mm -hmm. uh, flavor. Mm. You definitely pick up on that banana. You're right. Absolutely. It's, it's making me actually feel like a lot of the Hefeweizens I've had in the past aren't actually real Hefeweizens because I don't always get that in well, others. Many are not. Yeah, no, I love that. It always, um, and the banana for me is like a very concentrated banana, like a little banana chip kind of dried mm -hmm. banana flavor. Mm -hmm. And that clove is really, mm. Again, it's a very refreshing mm -hmm. beer on a hot day. This is great. And the last, last one we're trying least. is, it's certainly not least, it's the beer that started the brewery. It's our Pils. Uh, it's a Czech style Pilsner. It's got nice assertive hoppiness and bitterness. Uh, nice bitterness, bitter aroma. It's crisp and clean and yet it has this background maltiness. Yeah. And that has to do with the type of yeast that we use to ferment it. Great, right. the beer that started it all. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. You know, you and I were talking how Pilsners are very common and they're, I think you said it's the most. It's the most. Consumed, consumed beer, beer in the world. Right, and so. Style, beer style. Beer style, right. And so I'm very familiar with Pilsners, but I honestly, like, they just kind of, I'm like, that's what beer tastes like. Whereas this, it has some, like, nice complexity of the hops, and it's like a very more, like, well-crafted Pilsner. Well, we me. work really hard to make that beer. We, we use, as we discussed in there, a decoction mash, which is a very elaborate uh, uh, mashing mm. procedure. But yeah, it I, comes through in the malt character of the beer. Yeah, and all those local ingredients that you're bringing in from, and I say local, but that yeah. you're bringing in from the European areas where these it's beers are It's local where you make these yeah, beers. Absolutely, and so I, I yeah, feel like yeah. I can taste that. Like, yeah. yeah. These are amazing, and I feel like we have lots of beer to, to consume now, which I'm very excited about. So, what do you think? Should we go head outside and hang out in or your beer garden? To the beer garden? Yeah. Sounds good. The foresight and risk it took to start a brewery entirely focused on European style beers way back in the 90s is impressive and honestly what supporting craft brewers is all about. It's about incredible beer born of passion and a taste of place that intertwines tradition with innovation. Next time you're in Texas, make sure to get your hands on some live oak beer. Or better yet, come on down and enjoy this fabulous beer garden. Until next time, drink craft and drink local. Cheers! <laughs>